Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. In this video, I'm going to talk about VO2 max, why it's important, and to share my experience in increasing my VO2 max when I'm over 60 with a reasonable investment in time. Let's start with this quote from Dr. Peter Atier's new book, Outlive, The Science and Art of Longevity. As he says, VO2 max is perhaps the single most powerful marker for longevity, and so a key metric to track for our health span. And what is VO2 max? It is the maximum rate at which a person can utilize oxygen. This uses all aspects of the aerobic system and involves absorbing oxygen through the lungs, transporting it through the vasculature, using it to perform work in the muscle, and then removing the CO2 produced in this process. The better the system works and the faster the oxygen is processed, the higher the VO2 max. As VO2 max is an important metric, it's one that we have been tracking for a while. I was around 45 and my wife was 47 before I started taking NMN. Here is a slide which we presented in January 2021 in our NMN nine-month report, where my VO2 max was 52 and that of Mrs. Modern was 51. At the time, I had lost weight and made other changes as well, which probably all helped in this improvement. How good are these numbers? Here are some tables showing VO2 max against age for men and women and rating them from excellent to very poor. As you can see, in general, VO2 max decreases with age. I am now 61. In 2021, I was 59, and a VO2 max of 52 would have put me in the excellent category for my age, and indeed, also for someone in their 40s. A VO2 max of 51 for Mrs. Modern was also excellent for her age group and equivalent to someone in their late 20s. How have I done since then? The device I use to measure my VO2 max only retains 12 months history, so this is the earliest that I have. At the time, with the COVID pandemic in full swing and multiple lockdowns in Hong Kong, it had been hard to get out and exercise. So when I finally did have a run, my result had dropped to 46. Mrs. Modern's had dropped to 44. As a note, the unit of VO2 max is measured in milliliters of oxygen used per kilogram of body weight per minute. As this was greater than 10% drop from my high of 52, I wanted to improve it and set myself a goal of getting back to at least 50. Here is my latest result, which is 54 milligrams per kilogram per minute. This is the detail screen for the most recent number at 54. This is excellent for someone in their 30s to 40s. Now I'm 61 and two years older than my previous high. This is also my highest number since I've been measuring my VO2 max. So the regimen that I'm following seems to be working. Stress is an underlying cause of many health issues. And while most people focus on finding relief from stress through meditation or other forms of mental exercise, the stress may be caused by lack of a key nutrient. Magnesium is one of the most important nutrients for our health because it plays many crucial roles, supporting muscle and nerve function. It also impacts the release of stress hormones like cortisol and blocks the activity of stimulating neurotransmitters, leading to a more peaceful and restful state. To ensure that we have sufficient magnesium, my wife and I are taking magnesium breakthrough from bioptimizers. Magnesium breakthrough has the full spectrum of seven types of magnesium, specifically formulated to reach every tissue in our body for maximum health benefits. One of the important reasons we chose Magnesium Breakthrough is it's made with all natural ingredients, soy-free, gluten-free, lactose-free, non-GMO, free of chemicals and fillers. To get 10% discount on Magnesium Breakthrough, simply go to magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern. Use the code MODERN10. Thank you for your support. What did I do to improve my VO2 max over the last 10 months or so? The core technique is based on this paper effects of different protocols of high-intensity interval training for VO2 max improvements in adults, a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials. It was a systematic review paper looking at the efficacy of different HIT protocols in improving VO2 max and included a variety of participants from overweight to athletic. They looked at the VO2 max and VO2 peak comparing HIT to control or moderate-intensity continuous training. 
In conclusion, Tabata style short intervals, less than 30 seconds, with short rests for a total of less than five minutes, was effective, especially as a time efficient way of increasing VO2 max. However, the maximum impact was from long interval exercises, which is greater than two minutes, and high volume, with the workout taking longer than 15 minutes. They also compared whether the regimens were short-term or long-term, but since I'm training in an ongoing basis, this is not that relevant for me. What exact protocol did I follow? Based on my understanding of the paper and other research, I used a protocol called a 4x4. This is a run for four minutes at the maximum pace that you can maintain for four minutes. So you should be going at the same pace at the end of the run as at the start. This is followed by a four minute slow jog. The cycle is repeated four times for a total of 32 minutes of exercise. I aim for a steady pace, but I'm running outside and not on a treadmill. So it's difficult to judge if I'm following the same pace all the time. I aim to do a four by four at least once a week. During this time, my weight has not changed much, potentially increasing slightly. There are some other activities which may have contributed to the positive result. Walking from seven to 10K a day, resistance training, an occasional short hit for 20 seconds at 100% effort and 60 seconds recovery. I've not had time for any long distance running. In terms of supplements that might improve performance, I think the key ones are NMN and CAAKG. Since the start of this year, I've also added creatine and whey protein, which may be helping. A point that needs to be addressed here is how am I measuring my VO2 max? How much confidence can be put in the numbers that I am seeing? The gold standard for VO2 max measurement is to perform exercise to exhaustion while wearing breathing apparatus, which captures the amount of oxygen taken in and carbon dioxide expelled. This directly measures the oxygen consumption and conversion to CO2. However, to do this would require going to a lab which has the necessary equipment and is not something that can be done at home. Many fitness trackers will also provide an estimate of the VO2 max based on measuring your heart rate, distance covered and time while running. This is not measuring VO2 max in the same way. Rather, it is estimating it based on the quantities it can measure and the data such as age, sex, weight, and max heart rate that you input. I'm using this method with a Garmin Forerunner 235. Given that I'm not getting my VO2 max measured in a lab, it's worth considering how accurate consumer devices such as the Forerunner are at estimating the VO2 max. I did some research on this and found a few relevant papers. I will not dive into all the details on these as I'm only looking for validation that the numbers are mostly reliable. Here is one where they are comparing the Polar V800 and the Garmin Forerunner 230. Their conclusion is that the GF230 can provide an accurate estimate of VO2 max for both sexes. Another paper which looked at peak oxygen uptake in smartwatches also used a Garmin device. Note that VO2 peak is not the same as VO2 max, but they are related. Commenting on the Garmin Forerunner 245, they said, the mean absolute percentage error was 5.7%, where MAP is a measure of how accurate an estimate is to a known quantity. In this case, the lab measured VO2 max. Looking at a subset within the result sets in the mid range of VO2 max between 45 and 55, which is where my results are, the error was smaller at only 4.1%. Overall, therefore, my assessment is that the results of the Garmin watch are a reasonable estimate of my real VO2 max, and if nothing else, do represent a significant increase in the number over the last 10 months. I check my numbers and I tweak them to be as accurate as I can. In particular, my weight was up a bit and my max heart rate, as estimated by the watch, was too high. But after changes, my results from my run today is still a VO2 max of 54. So I do think that the number is as accurate as I can expect. I'm happy with my VO2 max getting better. As mentioned earlier, Peter Atia described VO2 max as perhaps the single most powerful marker for longevity. And so is definitely a metric that I'm going to be tracking. And secondly, it proves it's never too late to start exercising. There is definitely a chance you can be healthier and even beat the younger you.
Mrs. Modern hasn't restarted her running yet, but is going to start soon, following a similar protocol to mine. We will report on both of our progresses later. Please stay tuned. Thank you for your attention, and I will speak to you again soon. Thank you.